Hi everybody. Um, this is Jen from Welcome to Words. You may know me as Miss P or Miss Jen. Um, today I'm going to talk about sensory bins. This is something that we can make at home very easily using whatever is in our house. Um, I know during this time not many people are able to go out or to buy toys. So this is something really simple that you can make using what you already have. Um, here I have a sensory bin that I made um, using a plastic box with beans, dried beans. You can use any type of box that you have at home. You could use a shoe box, you could use a Tupperware, um, any leftover Amazon boxes that you have. You could even use um, bowls or baking sheets, things like that, um, or baking uh, actual like pots that have depth to them. So. You can fill it with beans, rice, um, pasta, dried, of course, uncooked, any type of grain. Um, you can fill sensory bins with cotton balls, marshmallows. Um, you could also make a water sensory bin, which, of course, we all have water. So just fill up any type of bin and your child could play with water. Um, I know that the OTs love sensory bins because it helps children become more organized um, and it appeals to a whole lot of different sensory preferences. Um, so this is a great activity that can keep your child busy for a very long time. I'm going to talk about how we could use sensory bins um, in speech and how we can use it to promote language. So here, like I said, I have a sensory bin filled with beans. So then we are going to think about what we could add to the sensory bin. Here I have some plastic like Easter eggs that I have um, on hand. You can add scoopers, any type of spoon or measuring cups. Um, you could use chopsticks, utensils, plastic cups. Um, so some of the verbs that we're going to be targeting during sensory bin play, um, these include scoop, pour, pour. Um, you could also target in, 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 and out. Um, you can target mix if you have a spoon or something like that. Mix. You could target rain. Sounds like it's raining. Rain. We could target fall. Oh, it's falling down. Fall. Boom. Um, we can also target vocabulary. So you could make the sensory bin and then you can pick some vocabulary words to target with pictures or toys that you have on hand. So for example, I have these magnetic animals. I have a dog, I have a bird, I have a fish. So you could hide them in the sensory bin under the contents and then you can go searching so you could Use uh, you could use those um, toilet paper rolls. You could pretend that they're binoculars. You could have a flashlight, and you can go searching and say, "Oh, they're hiding. I have to find them." So look around, and finally, when your child found something, you could say, "Oh, what is that? What did you find?" So you're targeting the actual noun, the ver the vocabulary word that they found. And then if your child is ready, they can make sentences. So you could target um, the phrases, I, I see, or I found. So you could say, I see a bird. And you could also take turns. This is a great opportunity to do turn taking with your child. My turn, your turn. Okay, your child found the red bird. Now it's my turn. Or your child could say, mommy's turn. And then you can go searching oh, and you model that language as well. So you're going to use the same phrase. Oh, burp, 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 burp. I found a dog. I found a dog. Um, you could work on, if you're using animals, you could work on animal sounds. The opportunities are really endless here. Um, and you can do these type of things with any toy that you have on hand. You can 
use magnets, you can use action figures, um, dolls. So I'll show you another example if we're targeting foods. Um, I have some for 10 foods here. Orange, lemon, strawberry. Again, you could put them in here, hide them up, and you can go searching again. Now, not only can you work on vocabulary um, and labeling these objects, you can also target the skill of following directions. So if you pull out the orange, you could have your child pretend to eat. So you could tell them, oh, eat the orange, eat, eat, eat. Yum. Um, you can follow the direction cut if you have a brick and knife, which I have somewhere else, but you could do cut. Um, you could put them in a pot, put in, put in the pot, put in, and then you could take a spoon and mix. So you can see you can target vocabulary for labeling nouns, for following directions, and for labeling these verbs. Um, just another example, I have my baby doll here. Baby doll comes with different accessories. If you have something similar at home, you could try something like this. Baby's here. Baby, we have to find her food and her milk. So you could hide the accessories um, in the sensory bin, and then you can go searching. You could either have your child search and find whatever they find on their own, or you could tell them to find something specific, and that way you would be targeting the skill of identifying. So here's the difference. If you say, okay, go find the milk, they have to remember that they need to find the milk and they have to identify, discriminate between the objects and identify that milk. So they're searching, they found the milk. Um, and then you could do following directions again, give to baby, targeting verbs, baby's drinking, drinking milk. You could work on sentence expansion. Baby is drinking or three words, babies drinking milk. Um, and here, um, so that was identifying. If they're labeling, you could say, okay, go find something for baby. They take something out. Oh, what did you find? And then they would label what they found. So juice, juice. Oh, good job. Give baby juice. Baby is drinking. Um, so that's another example of different toys. You can honestly use this with anything. You can put pictures in here. Um, if you have picture cards, you could target things like that. You can put little books in here. Um, or you could just use it to play. Like I said, um, this could just be a sensory activity for them. Um, it keeps them busy for a really long time and makes them calm. And you can work on sounds. Ooh. Or you could make people, you could take little um, figures and have them walk, 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 walk. Um, and another thing that's great, if you have a bin that has a lid on top, the lid might be hard for little hands to open. So you can target the skill of requesting assistance. So they would have to use the word help. So they could try, 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 and then they would be motivated to communicate by asking for help in some way, shape or form. So you could have them use the word help. You could have a visual like, this one, and you could have the child point to it, and that's their way of asking for help. They could use the sign for help, help me, and then you would open for them. Um, another word to, of course, target in the same way would be to target the word open, which is a very functional core word. We use open across all different activities. Um, so again, if it's hard to open or you could hold it and say, oh, what should we do? What should we do? Um, you could target that word open. Um, same thing with clothes when you're all done with it. Um, after they pull one thing out, if they're finding, uh, finding items, they can pull one out. You could close it really quickly. Um, and then they will have to tell you more. I want more. Oh, more. Okay. And you could have them request recurrence that way um, by closing it up after each trial. Um, and these bins are just great for any type of language that you want to target. Nouns, verbs, expanding sentences, expanding vocabulary, 
and um, promoting those communicative functions. So requesting, commanding, they could tell you to open or they can tell you go find, um, rejecting or terminating, they could say, no, we're all done. Um, requesting assistance, like I said, help me. Um, commenting, labeling, identifying. Really the opportunities are endless. So find something like a bin or anything you can throw some small items in. Just of course, monitor your child. Um, make sure if your child is somebody who puts things in their mouth, of course you wanna be with them and watch them at all times to make sure that um, they're safe while using this. But other than that, have fun and just be creative.